Hello there, welcome back to Going Around. And today we're going to combine building Go application in our Docker container. So far, what we've been doing is building our application outside of the Docker container. And we have to be careful to make sure that we build a Linux binary. And a few times you've probably seen me say, go build, end up with a Mac binary because on a Mac or if you are on Windows, you would end up with a Windows binary. And then I have to go back and go, oh, this doesn't work. I have to do go OS to set the correct operating system, right, for the binary. And so we can get rid of that headache. Uh, of course, if you're on Linux, then this is not a problem. And we can just have our source code be copied into the image and then run the build go build command within the image and we'll get a binary that's correct. Now there's a couple of advantages um, for doing it this way and I'll show you that today. What I'm gonna show you is using a builder image, right? Now we can, you know, possibly copy the code in, build it, and then remove the code. But yeah, that seems like a little bit hacky, right? So what if the delete failed, now your code is in the container, the container is compromised, your code is exposed. So we'll see how to get around that. That's the objective here, is to using um, a container to build our code and then um, copying over the code that we wanna run to another container. So we're using like stage building, but again, using several containers and you'll see how we'll put this in one Docker file. All right, before we jump into the material, please do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button if you um, enjoy the material, like what you're seeing. Hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. Hit the bell, hit the bell notification so that you can be notified when I post videos. All right, thanks a lot for doing that for me. And now let's jump in. So here I am on my command line. And we'll start off by copying. Um, our previous example. So that was part three. So I'm going to do part three and I'm going to copy that as essentially an alcohol building Docker Go apps in Docker container. And so hopefully this is going to be a very short video, but we'll see. So Docker container. So there we go. All right. So as usual, I'll bring my Visual Studio code editor in this directory. And um, let's also, so trust this workspace, whatever that's about. And let's also in the bottom here, let's do the same thing. Go to this directory, container, and there we are. Okay, so like I said, we're starting out exactly where we were before. Now before we were using um, this log directory so we can get log from our container so we can see whatever is written inside our container is reflected outside. For now, I'm going to remove this directory because that's not of the focus of today's video, but everything we've done before um, still work. Now, if you do not map the directory, even though we say export volume, remember, it just simply use an internal um, directory within the container. It's just that we wouldn't get to see it. All right, so we don't really have to do anything to um, our code. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. Now, if you remember, what we're doing is we say, um, where's copy? Oh, we add app to our project, right? So we would have to build it. Let's just call it app one for now. And so um, we'll have to build it and copy it to our directory. And our working directory here is root. Now, we don't have to run our application out of root. Like we could run it out of some other directory, right? And maybe there is an argument to say that, oh, we should not run as root. And I'll give you a link to how you can do even more secure applications. I'm not gonna focus on that here, but just know. Um, we can get rid of some of these because these were sort of play things to show us that we have multiple commands that we can run. Um, but we don't have to keep all of this stuff, right? Um, updating it and so on. We don't have to do all of that stuff. Now, if we just step back here and say, what would we need in order so that when we build this image, we can say add file one to our root directory so that later on our entry point is, you know, run this application with this parameter. We would need to say go OS, this is what I'm talking about, equals to Linux, and then go build and make sure that oh, we can build our application um, as app one. Now, this of course, with this silly long name, 
for the directory name. So let's remove that and let's rebuild it. I said minus out, let's call it app one, right? We'll have to make sure that's how we do that. Okay, but we, again, we don't want to be have to think about doing that. So instead, what we want to possibly do is say, what we should do is copy um, our source directory or the current directory where we have our code, right? Copy all of it into the container and then have it built. Now, if we copy our current directory, we're not only going to be copying, let's remove app, for example. Not only are we going to be copying um, the main that go, but we are also copying the Docker file. We don't really need to do that. And for this example, it might seem easier to just copy main that go, but let's pretend that really what we have is a very complex application that's, you know, and we have like a source directory and within source, we have maybe a go that mod file, you know, it says module, let's call it app one, for example, and within there, we drop our main that go. So this would represent the fact that I put this in a directory means that all we could have a ton of files under there and, and, and that's, you know, abstract away the detail and complexity of our application. So in that case, what we might really want to do is in our Docker file here is actually say copy, you know, or source directory. And so where should we copy it? Well, again, we will copy it to our working directory here, which is the root directory. Um, so let's do this. Um, we can um, that, 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 that. We can say, let's come bring this down and say, let's do that. And so we start off by saying, our application exposes or this component exposes port 8000, nothing changed. We make a directory slash data. We expose that as a volume. And our current working directory is, you know, you know, root, let's say we can say that and then copy to the root directory, you know, um, the source directory slash um, source. Um, I think if we do source dot, it should, should also work. I think what's going to happen is the contents of that directory is going to be copied into root. So I still want it to be called probably, um, yeah, let's leave it as it is. So that way, oh, you know what, even better. Um, let's make the working directory slash SRC. And so now I'll copy, um, code to the source to root source. And so the contents of my source here, so this is going to be go mod, all this other stuff is going to appear in this directory, but because that's my working directory, then I can simply say, run a command to build it. So we can say um, run. And what I want to do is to be able to run. And so I can run it this way. So I can do one string like this, like go build, or I can do it as an array and pass the individual arguments of go is the command itself. And these are its argument. So I can do build and I can say that um, the next option um, is argument is minus O and we want to use app one. So something like that. So I can totally do that, right? And then once we have the application there, it's in this current directory, which is fine. We could run it this way. Uh, we can, or we can also be explicit about where we want to run from, you know, source, da, da, da. Um, of course, we can have our output be written somewhere else if we didn't want to run from our root directory. So for now, I'll leave that. I'm just showing you all the options. So let's see. Um, so this is, what is this complaint about? I don't know why it's complaining. Maybe it's the, pro, the um, editor needs to close and reopen. Um, I've seen issues with that before. So for now, I think it's fine. So I'm going to ignore it. And so let's clean up and let's do um, Docker build. And so what I want to do is build um, the in the current directory, tag it as section 25.5, and let's call it app one version one. And so let's run and see if this works. And so there we go. And it's giving me an exception here, container that Linux that go starting container process cause exe, go executable file in that form. This is understandable because in this container, we did not, this is Ubuntu. We did not install the Go executable. Well, thankfully for us, and so 
let me see I should have that here so thankfully for us if you go to dockerhub.com and then you search for Golang you'll see that these are official docker official images this is from the go team they have provided a slew crap ton of images if you like um, for you to be able to do go development and actually tell you and there are a bunch of them some of them are um, based off of ubuntu i believe but some of them are based off of alpine which is known for being very very small um you know compact image and people use that tend to tend to use that for um either as their base where you do from you know in your docker container and then built on build on top of that um because it comes basically with very little in it it's already stripped and so um they show you here all you can do is you can say from like golang and then you know set your working directory and of course you can do it this way um where your working directory is go source app and then you copy in your code and then you go to go get and install go get will just get all the dependencies but we're just going to sidestep all that because using go module i don't actually have to do an explicit go get i'll just do from go now why not ubuntu i could use ubuntu to an update and then add go language but why do that when the go team has provided you know the go lang image and i'm not i'm not going to specify a version of golang here i'm going to use the latest so if i go back here clean up and i rerun and now it should be successful and so you can see it's downloading some stuff and it fetched all the stuff that my application needed these are all the dependencies right and so it built my application it says successfully built now now that that's built i should be able to run it right so if i do docker run and then i say run as a daemon minus d i give the name app one and i'm gonna map the local port 8080 to port 8000 because that's where my application is listening to and that is what it exposes really is the important thing and then it's going to be this um, tag that we just built and so if i do that i should get back an image a container id and i can say docker log and I should be able to log and see that, oh, yeah, my server log, that's how it started. So, so that's, that's good. And that's fine. I can stop doing that. But I can do curl. And if I do localhost, I can see that I get back a message, hello, from this container. You can see that's the container name indeed. So everything is working just as before. So I was able to build and have the application there. Well, here's what I want to show you. I can say Docker image list. And let's grab for section whatever that's what the thing was called no i don't want to edit anything um but look at this this is our image that we built and you can see it's 860 megabytes that's a big fat image it's pretty big and so um what you might want to do is be able to reduce the size of that image now let's see how big the golang image itself is so let's do golang and we can see that golang latest is you know 839 now we might be able to use golang alpine notice that's 300 and so let's do that let's rebuild and do golang a l p i n e and again i'm not going to worry about any specific version and let's call this um you know what um I would like to modify my application in one way, and that is going to be to say which ports it's running on. And so, um, hello, I'm starting on HTTP server on port percent uh, V, and then let's do port. So we kind of see which port we're starting on, which is whatever port was configured, because remember we parse flags. Okay. Um, and so I'll call this, let's control C and let's, uh, oh, we should remove our existing application because um, Docker RM, we should remove the application that we're running, that, that container. Okay, um, so let's clean up and do Docker build again. And if I run this, it's gonna do the same thing because it's a new images building, has to download all right, so let's 
do this again and no I do not want you to edit anything and notice now our final image is much smaller than the 860 we're using Alpine which is much smaller so this is good because if you're pushing your image to an image server maybe they have limitation or they charge you for how much data you store or even just the mere fact that when you go to startup why use much larger image if you can get away with a smaller one right so uh, when it comes to containers and application you know if you can get away with a smaller size and doing the same thing um, go absolutely go for it and so let's see if it actually works so we can do try running again so let's run our application oh we didn't give it a different tag okay and so there we go it's running and then i'll do log and this should show you that how we're using yep the new application notice um it should be listening on port 8000 and we can do the curl command and same thing so our stuff is working just fine all right so this doesn't seem to be anything new um compared to what we've done i've simply like i said just used an image as base that has go in it and just build our application in there so the one benefit now is i don't have to worry about notice in my source directory you don't see anything about that binary it's not there and it's built for the correct environment so that's good what i did tell you though is that we can separate our building um the container we use for building from the container we use for running and so the way we can do that is by doing this we can say that we need to use from go alpine this very small one as our builder or build and you could give it a tag essentially and so if you hover over this you can see that um uh, tag on no alias they call this and so if you go to online documentation open documentation you'll see it can say from as name so you can give it a name that's what it is in name and so by naming this base as builder we can do all the stuff that we need to do for building which is all the way here and then once we get here we can say you know what from some other image and let's just call it go alpine also because that's pretty small and we can say from there we really need to um, be able to um, run our application so that means that we need to do these sort of thing in this other container which is expose the port that we're going to be using for because this is this container here uh, we could think of this i can call this as runner <laughs> or runtime if i like but within this this image that we're going to build remember from every when you do from it says the base image and then it modifies it so we're saying use this base to build where we're gonna create a work and directory, copy in our source code, run the build command, and that's great. And then here we'll do, from this guy, we want to be able to say that we're gonna expose this port and we have a work and directory. And how do we get the binary that we built? Remember the binary built is in this directory, um, root source slash app one. How do we get that in this image? It's a totally different image. So what we, we do is we can say copy and with the copy let's open it again and copy we can do da, 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 copy 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 and let's see there's a copy from optionally copy accept a flag from that can be used to set the source location to a previous build stage created with from as which is exactly what we're doing so we can do that so we can say copy space dash dash from and the stage that we want to copy from is builder right that's the name of the stage and the directory so now we're just saying that oh it's from this stage this previous stage here but the directory that we want to copy or the image the thing we want to copy is from root slash src slash app one that's the thing we want to copy and we can copy it to I don't know anywhere we want right really but let's put it back in root for now uh, you know we're going to be boring and put it back in root app one and what we should probably do is then set this as the path that we want to run with root slash app one okay so same path here 
is the same path we run with here. Okay, and so that's all there is to it. I mean, it's really not that complex. If you look at it, we just separated the two things. Before, we are essentially doing this, um, the, just this at the bottom here. That's all we were doing before. Now we've introduced this part of building the um, image within or building our application within a container. And what we, the difference here is now we have separated the two. Now you may say, why separate the two? Well, I sort of hinted that in the introduction. This second image will not have our code. So if it's compromised or whatever, our code is not there. Maybe our code is a lot of code, it doesn't matter. Maybe we need one type of image for building because there are a lot of dependencies and then the runtime image is completely different with very few dependencies. So for all those reasons, if you don't need to have a bunch of stuff in your image, why have it there? It just um, leads to more um, surface for an attack, right? So let's just um, do, um, Docker RM to clean up or run an application or application we have there. We'll do Docker build and this time we'll call it version two. So we'll leave the other one around. And so, um, you know what I can do is clean up this and then do um, this, that, watch minus D. And then if I do that, we should see, yep, the previous one, version one is like 320 and that's fine. I don't expect the other one to be much smaller because we're still using Alpine, Golang Alpine. Now, I'll talk about something in a bit, but we'll see. So yeah, there we go. And now successfully um, copied over. And so now we have a second um, version two, which is slightly smaller and I'm guessing that's because we don't have all the code that well, any intermediate code or something. I don't know um, because we didn't really have to do a whole lot. We just copy over. Yeah, the only thing that's different is that we didn't have the code, but the code wasn't that much for it to be like you know 14 megabytes difference. But it is it's 14 megabytes smaller, and that's a good thing. Smaller is smaller. Every byte conks. Um, all right, so now we can run our application with this new one. And so let's do Docker. So let's clean up Docker run. And then we'll say version two of our application. And it's running and we can say Docker log to make sure that it's started and it's started and it's listening. And we can say curl. And there we go, our application is running. So what have we done today? We've shown that how you can build in one and within one Docker file, you can have a stage where you build with one image and then even within that same file you can copy artifacts or the result of your build or whatever work you're doing in that first stage into another stage and continue so you can do this as many times as you need to multiple stages if you have multiple stages built and the advantage here is one our build stage can have many more dependencies and all these other things than our execution stage and so that allows us to limit things. Now, Alpine is, an, is what is happening here is the Go team is using Alpine um, image as their base and adding all the Go stuff to it. So let me show you that. So if we go back to, you know, Docker Hub and you just pick Alpine, any one of them, it's going to show you what they're doing. And you can see it says from Alpine. And they have to add a bunch of things, right? They have certificates because Alpine is so small, it just comes with basically nothing in it, right? Um, let's do Control C here, and then let's do Docker image list. And then if I do grep, and I do Alpine, um, you can see Alpine latest and so on. It's just like five point something megabytes. This is a very, very small images. The problem with them is, however, because they have so little in it, and you'll see from what the Go community had to do, all these things they have to add to it in order to get it to be able to run Go code. And the reason for that is, let's say we do this. Let's say we decide that, oh, you know what? We actually don't want, because our runtime image actually has Go build tools, and ideally, we don't really want that, right? Um, why have at runtime, we're not running Google command itself. So why have it there? We already build the application. So ideally, we should, we, we, what we want is something like this, is to just use Alpine and say, hey, just run our application. 
Well, let me show you what will happen there. So let's try and do a Docker RM. Remove our app because that's still running. And then I'll do Docker um, build and let's call it three. I'll clean up the screen and I'll run. So if we were to do a watch command again and we look, we'll see three. Wow, this is amazing. We we took uh, you know essentially a Alpine image that's like 5.5 or 6 gig megabits, let's say, and our application is itself because remember Go does static binaries, right? And there are even ways that you can make the Go binary even smaller because it contains some debugging information, so you could strip that out. But it's still a static binary. You can take it to anyone to anyone. It could run it on a Linux system. But this Alpine is already a Linux system, right? Um, I mean, I can prove that. I can say docker run minus interactive minus rm to remove this container when I'm finished. And I could say Alpine, and I can say sh. And here I am inside of Alpine, right? I can do ls, I can do, I don't know if they have ps because they don't install a lot of fps. But you know what? There's not much in there. Well, here's the thing. Um, I'll take this opportunity to go back here and do this. I'll say docker ps to get all the running image, um, containers. And you can see the Alpine one is running here. So I'll do that. And what I'll do is um, in this directory, I'll go to source and I'll say go OS, build this for Linux. So I'm doing this on my Mac. And I'll say docker copy, copy this application I just built on my Mac to this container, this Alpine Linux container into the root file system. So if I go back here now and I do ls, you should see I have that Linux binary, right? And if I do file and I say app one, assuming they have the file command, they don't. <laughs> um, so how do you add stuff to Alpine? Well, you use this, uh, app um, apk add and so maybe I can do apk add file command um, let's see if it's going to install it yep and so there we go and I do app 1 and it tells me it's an ELF file so it is a Linux file right and it's statically linked which we can see here we expect it's a go build right um, so if I try to run this though app 1 look at that there you go it's, it's running, right? Well, and it says it's listening. Now, if we exit this and we try to run our Docker run and we try to run our three, remember three, let's clear this up, watch. Three is the image that we build, the last image we build that says Put our application and base it off of Alpine, right? The runtime Im image that was staged, right? And so if we do minus D and then we do this, and then now we do Docker log, and this you'll see that's how uh, it's running. And so let's go back here, Control C, and do curl, and there you go. Now, what I was going to show you is that sometimes um, I've seen where you build your application, you copy it into an Alpine, you use Alpine as your final stage, and then it does not work. It didn't allow the execute to just run. Even when I log into the container and try to run it, it didn't work. So just be aware of if you see that happen, just make sure maybe you're using the latest Alpine. I don't know, maybe I was using an earlier one. That's why I didn't check the version because notice I'm just doing like Alpine and it's taking the latest one. So, but this is just goes to show you exactly what I start out saying is that you can use one um, stage, which is a much bigger one that has all kinds of tools in it for you and dependencies for you to build your code. And then your runtime is something that's much, much smaller. Okay, so that's it. Um, I know that for some people this is kind of slow, the process that I take explaining everything, but I make videos the way I like seeing videos make. I like feeling that if I come away understanding the you know, ins and outs of it as best as I can or to a certain depth. All right, with that said, thank you again. 
if you can support the channel in whatever way, you know, making sure you're subscribed, um, sending out um, invitation to other people to join, hitting the notification bell, and of course, you know, looking at the Patreon page or my PayPal and um, other ways of contributing. That would be very awesome. Thank you very much. Take care, stay safe. Bye, see you in the next video.